Hi, this is Nancy Reed, and I am continu continuing ophthalmology lectures, and we're going to be discussing lacrimal disorders. Um, there is a lacrimal dis disorder that um, affects uh, many people, and it's called dacryocystitis. And we're just going to do a little review again of the lacrimal system. Um, the lacrimal gland sets within the bony um, orbit in the upper outer edge um, just below the eyebrow and the tears um, cover the eye and then they're drained um, by the puncta. They go through the caniculi and um, into the lacrimal sac and then out the nasolacrimal duct. So dacryocystitis is an infection of the lacrimal sac due to the obstruction of the na nasolacrimal system. And this un um, typically happens unilaterally. It can be caused because of uh, congenital uh, reasons or it can be acquired. And if it happens later in life, it typically affects females greater than males and it usually occurs um, to people over the age of 40. And the etiology behind this is an inflammatory infectious um, etiology and if it's acute it's caused by staph aureus bacteria or beta hemolytic streptococci and if it's chronic it's typically caused by staph epidermidis uh, anaerobic streptococci and candida albicans. So signs and symptoms include pain, swelling, and tenderness to palpation um, over the lacrimal sac area. So you have to be careful when you do palpate the lacrimal sac area because if there is purulent um, matter stored in that sac, if you push on it, it will come back out the caniculi, back out the puncta, and it could actually spray on you. So I would tell you to make sure that you have a face mask on, uh, protective goggles, um, if you are going to palpate the lacrimal sac. So um, treatment typically begins um, with medical treatment, just like any other um, condition. We usually give um, systemic antibiotics. If that doesn't work, then we go on to a surgical type of procedure. So adults would get what's called dacrocystorhinostomy, which is the fistulization of the lacrimal sac into the nasal ca cavity. So um, the lacrimal sac will drain right into the nasal cavity. Um, and in the pediatric population, we do a balloon dilation or a probe. So you'll see here on the right-hand side, this kiddo has an inflammation that is over top of where you could imagine the lacrimal sac would be. You can actually see purulent exudate coming out. Um, building up in this lower re or in this uh, medial region right here. And if you were to palpate on this lower region, um, pus would most likely squirt out um, the puncta. So um, this is an example of just doing a probe and you just put a small probe in the puncta through the uh, caniculi to break up any kind of obstruction that might be there. And this is the balloon dilation um, that happens with children. A very similar um, condition that can look um, the same is periorbital cellulitis and orbital cellulitis. Orbital cellulitis. But these are infections um, of the orbit region and not the nasolacrimal uh, system. But you can see here how the two conditions kind of look similar in appearance if you're just doing an inspection. Periorbital cellulitis uh, typically has a history of a break in the skin of the eye or around the eye or potentially an infected chalazione. So uh, somebody might say they got hit in the face with a branch, uh, like got slapped with a branch or maybe a, a cat scratch or a scratch from a child. Signs and symptoms, um, when you do an inspection, you should, you'll should you likely see edema, erythema. You may see um, purulent discharge. You typically see a teary eye. The person can have a fever 
and they may complain of reduced vision, especially if that swelling is pushing on the eye itself. And this is usually seen in those under the age of two. And the etiology is a preceptal infection that's usually caused by staph aureus, staph pneumonia, streptococci, uh, MRSA is on the rise. And since the infant of the H flu vaccination, H flu has had a decrease um, as the causative agent. So periorbital cellulitis, if you do a CT scan on somebody who has um, periorbital cellulitis, the CT scan is often needed to differentiate between periorbital cellulitis and another condition which we're going to call, which we're going to discuss here in just a bit called orbital cellulitis. On a CT with periorbital cellulitis, you don't see any fat stranding in the orbit. Um, there's no involvement of the extraocular uh, muscles. The eyelid is swelling, but there's no proptosis. And what proptosis is, is that bulging eye effect that you get kind of what, what people would describe as bug eye. So treatment for periorbital cellulitis, um, if someone is, is not super ill appearing and is not running, you know, fevers that are very, very high, you can try them on an outpatient antibiotic um, regimen. But you do want to keep real close watch on them to make sure they get, they're getting better and they're not getting worse. They generally recommend hospitalization for children younger than um, one year or who are critically ill appearing. So if they're ill appearing, you want to go ahead and get them hospitalized. The antibiotic um, that you would prescribe is uh, targeted at the cause uh, of the causative agent. Children younger than four may need IV antibiotics. And again, if the outpatient therapy fails to show improvement in about 24 to 48 hours, you want to get these patients hospitalized and you want to get them on a broad spectrum antibiotics. You want to make sure you'll do a CT to ensure that you didn't miss the diagnosis of orbital cellulitis. And potentially you may need a surgical, surgical consultation um, to potentially do an incision and drainage. So the similar um, condition to this is orbital cellulitis which uh, typically is more uh, concerning. So signs and symptoms of orbital cellulitis is an abrupt onset of fever. So these people will generally have a, a higher fever than the people with periorbital cellulitis. They're gonna have proptosis. Their eyes are gonna be pushing out. They're gonna have that bug eye look and they're gonna have pain and restriction of extra ocular movement. So if you, you know, tell them, say, okay, watch the end of my finger, and you draw the H in the air, and you watch their eyes, typically somewhere along the line, they're going to have some restriction um, in the affected eye. They'll have edema and erythema um, of the lid. Now, if you compare this picture of this kiddo back to this guy right here, clearly he looks worse, but... It's all about where the infection is actually setting. He looks worse, but this girl's infection is in a different place, which we're gonna show you here in just a second. So don't let the appearance throw you off. And a lot of times you'll see somebody with periceptal um, cellulitis and you're like, oh my gosh, this is orbital cellulitis. Stop and really think your way through it, get a good history, um, and, and really check the boxes. You know, have they had a scratch? in periorbital cellulitis. Was there a, a abrupt onset of fever? Could it be orbital cellulitis? So the etiology behind this condition is they, these kiddos typically have an infection um, of the paranasal sinuses. So they're gonna give a history a lot of times of a chronic sinusitis um, that preceded this or an acute sinusitis that preceded this. And the causative uh, agents of this is um, uh, staph or strep pneumonia, H. fluenza, and staph aureus. So treatment for this is an urgent referral. These guys need to be on IV antibiotics immediately. So therefore, IV antibiotics would equate a hospitalization. And we have to make sure that this infection doesn't um, spread to the cavernous sinus, meninges, and the brain. So here is on the left-hand side 
uh, the same uh, little girl and she's doing the extraocular uh, eye movements and you can see that her especially in this top uh, picture her eye will not go up um, her superior rectus muscle can't pull that up and also her she has uh, some changes in her uh, left eye when she looks immediately so there's going to be some restriction on that extraocular eye movements and then you're going to look over here on the CT and you can see especially in this middle picture that you see the um, eye is bulging out more and you will be able to see this pocket of infection right here that's that's behind so the infection is sitting behind the eye and it's pushing the eye out of the socket actually versus that preceptal which is up front and again that's what makes it look worse but this is the worst of the two conditions because the infection is in behind the eyeball itself so here here's a little um, summation table of the pathogenesis the uh, mean age the clinical findings and the causative agents as far as bacteria and on the right hand side you'll see the differences in where the cellulitis sets up so in a preceptal cellulitis it's in this front portion of the eye but in orbital cellulitis it um, will impact behind the eye and it gets in uh, orbital abscess and then it can go into the subperiostal abscess and then worst case scenario it moves on back to the cavernous sinus the meninges and the brain so this is why orbital cellulitis is an urgent referral to an ophthalmologist so if you get your handout out that we talked about um, previously um, you, you're going to want to make sure that you put down the physical exam findings that you would would be abnormal on orbital cellulitis is extraocular eye movements and that this is an urgent referral so what I want you to do now is um, there's a little activity a six question activity if you will go to https colon forward slash forward slash forms dot gle forward slash a u i d g d l a e d nine g q m one five nine um there's a little six question test to help help you um get these two conditions straight uh, and give you a little clinical exercise <laughs>